we were just trying to compile some things um, to kind of show you the seriousness of this invasive pest that um, is really um, taking hold in Pennsylvania. Um, it came in Pennsylvania in 2014, um, and it has now 14 southeastern counties in quarantine. So this is a picture of the adult of a spotted layer of fly. And as you can see, it came into Pennsylvania from Asia back in 2014. It has spread to four states, and it has been detected in four additional states. And here they are. So as Maureen was saying, the blue sections that are on this map are showing you the counties of those states that are in quarantine. The yellow are the ones where spotted lantern flies have been found. And here is a quick life cycle of the spotted lantern fly that is uh, an illustration from Penn State. At the top, they show the eggs, they have the first hatch. Now the first hatch, that first instar, I hear, look like black ticks. They're small, they're on the move, but they have white dots. So the black nymph with the white spots is what it looks like for the first, what they call three instars. And then it turns to the red down the bottom left. So the black and white is about a quarter inch. It then becomes the uh, fourth instar, which is the red, it's about a half inch. And you see the different timings of the calendar year when those stages are expected to be uh, uh, seen and out in the environment. And then it turns into the adult, and then the adults start laying eggs again. And so here is a better picture, um, some actual pictures of this, the cycle instead of the illustration. You have your eggs, you have your first nymph, fourth nymph, um, adults, and some people say, oh, look at that beautiful butterfly when they see the adult, you know, down there in E. In grade wise, it deserves an E, okay? <laughs> it might be pretty, but it's making a fool out of anybody who thinks because it's so pretty, we don't want to kill it. This is probably one of the most destructive uh, invasive insects that's been in our area. It feeds on a lot of plants, and for 70 different uh, plants, trees, and things, and we'll get to that. But any of those stages, the idea is destroy it, kill it. But this guy is not a um, moth, and it's not a um, butterfly, it's a plant hopper. So it does the damage of a plant hopper on a lot of different agronomic crops, on trees and stuff, so it has that long, straw-like mouthpiece that pierces, and it'll pierce through vines, it'll pierce through bark. It, it's a serious feeder. Here's another picture of an adult with some egg masses, the laying egg masses. This is a picture of a tree out in nature where it's been laying all the egg masses. And this goes to show you how the appearance of an egg mass might change over time. And I say as it's ripening or you know becoming more mature and, and ready to hatch. And you notice the one on the left uh, looks, looks more thick. Um, they, they put this putty type covering over the top to protect it from the environment, from uh, rains and freezes and things like that. And in each one of those egg casings, there's about 35 to 50 eggs. Can you go back one? Oh. So if you see here, so they lay them in these rows. So that's an uncovered egg mass. There is no study that says that these will die. So these could even survive. Um, but then you'll see in another picture, but she puts this white <clears throat> like film over it to protect the egg masses. So if you see anything like this too, which can be hard to see, as you can see in the bark there, um, that is exactly what, it, what we're looking at, is those rows of eggs. Yeah. They typically, from what I've heard, they typically like smooth surfaces. It doesn't have to be truly smooth, but you can kind of see that concrete thing is somewhat smooth, that wooden box is smooth, but then you go to the wall and you ask yourself, okay, well it's kind of bumpy, it has some bark, but it, it doesn't have a real deeply furrowed bark. And they will lay their eggs on anything. So you have to be really careful as to, it could be on a barbecue outside, it could be on your lawnmower, it could be on your house, it could be on your pool, it could be anywhere if they end up being a, a breeding population in this area. What this is showing is that um, the adults get on the tree and as they pierce and suck and feed, they also go to the bathroom and they excrete what they call a honeydew and a honeydew is a clear substance that's sticky and sweet. So you can see the wetness. That wetness that's running down the tree, 
That's from them going to the bathroom. And if you look underneath the tree in the surrounding uh, debris and stuff that's around there, that is a black layer and it's sooty mold. So when the adults feed and they're feeding in mass, they're sucking the life out of whatever they're feeding on. They're going to the bathroom creating this honeydew. It attracts other insects and pests, but it's also a petri dish for sooty mold spores that are in the air, air waiting for the proper medium to grow. So the sooty mold comes driving in the air 100 miles an hour and they, it gets established and what it does is it creates this black, this black layer that then you know, blocks the sun it ends up interfering with photosynthesis, so it could end up killing the plants that it's on. And here's another picture of the honeydew. You see, it kind of has that, that, that wet look, and then the black is starting to take hold. So you can imagine those leaves, when they have that black co co uh, coating on it and covering, it's, it's not going to be able to photosynthesize. The spotted lantern fly feeds on over 70 different plants. It's on fruits, it's on vegetables, it's on trees. And as Maureen said, it doesn't just feed on the tree of heaven, Hylanthus tree. It feeds on other trees. It's going to feed where it needs to feed. And if it's not a Hylanthus tree, it's going to find something to feed on. And there have been trees that have been decimated and killed from spotted lanternfly. Now, this is a picture of some adults on clusters of grapes. And they may not be feeding on the grape itself. So much, but they do. But when they get in mass like that, no matter what they're feeding on, you can start seeing down the bottom right there's a little bit of wetness. That honeydew is going to cause a problem in these grape vines. But they go off the fruit and they go to the vine or to the cane and they pierce into that cane and they suck the life out of the vine. And there have been vineyards in Pennsylvania that have been decimated and are completely dead from spotted lantern fly coming in to their, their vineyard. Um, there were also vineyards in Pennsylvania that there was feeding going on in the next year. They didn't produce any fruit. The vines were somewhat alive, but they weren't productive. This is um, a stat from the Berks County um, greenhouse and nursery. And what, it's, a, it's a pretty big production, but just so you're aware, Cecil County is number one in greenhouse and nursery production in the state of Maryland. So our our greenhouses and our nurseries are huge in our economic impact in, in, in the county. I mean, in the state. Um, this this particular one applied 65 additional sprays, additional sprays to their plants. So every single day they were out there spraying insecticide just to keep their plants alive. Imagine what that does to the cost of the product. Imagine what it does to the labor cost of this of this nursery. Um, and then they can't, half their markets go away because they can't sell to a particular market that won't accept people that have sprayed with neonicanoids or certain insecticides. And it's the only thing that is killing off these, these insects. So we definitely have an opportunity here to stop it before it spreads like this. Because if, if, if this comes into our nurseries, we could see a huge impact on our economy. So today at Cecil College, we had a lunch and learn uh, to educate the general public about the spotted lanternfly and the importance of everyone being on the lookout and taking action to stop the spread. This was a, com a combination of a partnership with the Upper Shore Regional Council, the Cecil County Economic Development Office, Maryland Department of Agriculture, and the University of Maryland Extension. There is a display in the lobby of the Cecil County Administrative Building. If you would like to stop by, take a closer look, pick up some free materials, you can look on the Cecil County Extension website to find out more information, or you can call our office number at 410-996-5280 to get more information about the spotted lanternfly and the importance that everyone has for taking care of destroying the population of this new invasive.